This is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Everyone dreams about being a hero, maybe a spy. I've always wanted to be a secret agent. Well, now I can be with M Freeze Frame Blockbuster. Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today, we're looking at the brand new M Freeze Frame Blockbuster. M Freeze Frame are a number of presets that are inspired by blockbuster movies like Interstellar, Pirates of the Caribbean, Doctor Strange, The Matrix, and more. To locate M Freeze Frame Blockbuster, go to your titles. In M Freeze Frame Blockbuster, there are 30 presets. We have five different backgrounds. However, each of these backgrounds do carry a number of options. So when you do see sky, you are actually getting six skies within that background. We have 12 overlay effects, and then we have 11 different typography presets. All right, so now let's look at how to apply M Freeze Frame Blockbuster presets and then we can go over utilizing some of the different tools like backgrounds, overlay effects, typography, etc. So for this one, I believe M Freeze Frame Blockbuster at number 17 is going to do a great job. So we're just going to pick up M Freeze Frame Blockbuster number 17 and let's drag it in above our clip on our timeline. Now I do want to give just a few frames prior to the title taking place. So I'm gonna use my arrow keys and we will just skip ahead two frames and then there we go. Okay, so as you can see on our canvas, we already have a set of tools going on here with the set current frame and then we've got some on-screen controls. And then you can also see this plus sign here because we do have our mask tool selected to add points on our frame. But first, let's choose a frame and then we can start setting our mask. So I do want this frame here, so I'm just gonna click set current frame. And then as we scrub, you can see, there we go. We do a little bit of the transition that happens and then that frame is set for the duration of our title. And then it is going to go back out. There's an animation out, fade out, into the rest of our video. So why don't we go over into our inspector because I did want to show you something before we start setting our mask. So let's go over to title. Now, as we come down, you can see mask frame here and it's set to zero, which is our current frame. However, if we wanted, we can toggle this and we can choose our frame with this slider here. So let's say that we wanted to go with frame number 14 as opposed to the one that we set. Now, when that does come in, it is gonna be frame 14. And you can do this all the way up to a thousand frames. So if we wanted to even set our frame down here at 122, now there's our frame, just in case you wanna make any changes after you've already added the title. Let's go ahead and set that back to zero. Awesome. So now we just need to set our mask. So I'm going to pick up this box. It is floating so we can kind of get it out of the way. I'm also going to set my canvas down to 50 just so I've got a little bit more space to work as my mask begins to come off of the frame down here. Something else I want you to notice, I am going to mask all the way around this guy here and you can see that my on-screen control is going to get in the way of adding that mask. Not to worry, we can just toggle that off. Obviously, if it's on and you pick it up, it's going to move the entire frame. We don't want that to happen, so let's just toggle that on-screen control off. And now we can start creating our mask. All right, so something I do want you to note that if you start setting your mask down the timeline, watch what happens, it's going to jump back to that very first frame. You do not want that to happen, so let's Command Z, and let's make sure that we are starting our mask right there at the first frame that the title is selected. So now when we click, that frame is not gonna jump. 
and then simply click around to start setting your mask. Now, the other thing that I will say is as you're clicking, we already know that you're gonna run into needing to have some Bezier tools. Not a problem when you click, if you click and just simply hold down and drag, it will make those Bezier tools automatically for you. Now, if you get in a position where you've clicked and you have forgotten and you say, oh no, I need a little bit of curvature there. It's totally fine. Hold down command. And as you click and drag, now you will get those Bezier tools back. So you can add those after the fact as well. All right, and I'm going to start masking. See you in a minute. And to finally close that mask, we have made it all the way back to our original. So let's just click. And now that mask has been closed. And as I scrub forward, you can see that mask is now isolated and we get all of those awesome things happening beneath Blockbuster number 17. So I wanna show you this really quickly. As we spoke about, we have this floating box here full of our tools. If we wanted to add any additional points, we are still on our add here. So we could click along any of our lines to add additional points. If you go and select this tool here, you can delete points. This tool is our selection tool. So if you want to click and drag over a selection of points, you do so here and they are all going to move freely for position, scale and rotation. And then we have this nifty button here, which comes in very handy, which is if we wanted to clear everything you can, or you can actually save or load in your mask. So why is this important? Let me show you. Let's go ahead and click save. We can save it here in our M freeze frame blockbuster folder. So let's just click save. And now let's say that we did not want to use blockbuster number 17. Let's just say we wanted to use, I don't know, blockbuster number 10. We click it, we drag it in. Let's disable number 17 here. And then when we select, you can see, oh no, we're, are we really going to have to do all of that again? Well, no, we're not because we can go in here and we can load that mask. And watch what happens. Boom. And now you have blockbuster number 10 in case you wanted to use it instead. Now you do still have to set your current frame. Keep that in mind. So set current frame, but the mask is saved. And then there we go. So don't forget, you have to set your current frame, but your mask will be held. So let's go ahead and delete that. Let's re-enable Blockbuster number 17. And then let's start looking at some of the options inside of our parameters. Over in our published parameters, we obviously will always have animation in and out toggles, but we can toggle our on-screen controls back on now. And you can see that our mask is going to pick that image up and you have the position, scale, and rotation as always with almost all Motion VFX plugins. If you would like to isolate your mask, you can do so here. And this is a really good tool to just make sure that your mask is done well if you need to do so. Of course, you can toggle your mask on and off if you need. And then you can toggle whether your mask will be freeze framed or whether a video is going to play beneath it. So that is very important to understand that if that's turned off, you can still mask over top of a video. Let's turn that back on. We already discussed our freeze frame. If you wanted to push through and select a different freeze frame, you need to set that to zero. You can invert your mask if you need to do so. 
And then here's our position, scale, rotation, etc., which is being used here with our on-screen controls. And you've just got a lot of different options. So if you wanted to change colors in your shadows and highlights, you do so here. If you wanna add any sort of contrast to make your mask stand out a little bit differently, you can do so here. And then we get down into the background tools. So Blockbuster 17 comes with this preset background that you can make all sorts of changes to the frame, the frame offset, you can change the opacity if you want and decide whether you want that to be a freeze frame or if you want just video to continue playing behind. So that's kind of cool. And you can change your ice strength, direction, etc. Now all of these are gonna be completely unique to their own preset, so keep that in mind. Now, let's go back over to our titles and let's scroll down and remember, we've got all of these different backgrounds and overlay effects, typographies, etc. So how can we use these in some unique ways? Well, one way we can do it is we can go to our background section here and let's just set our opacity to zero. So now we only have the mask along with some of those overlay effects. Let's say that we want a completely unique background. For this one, I think the sky is going to be best. So remember, things work in layers. So you want your sky layer to be beneath your freeze frame layer here. So now you can see that we have things kind of animating in and there's our sky. Now the colors are not exactly matching. That's okay, we'll get to that. On our canvas, we always have on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. We have animations in and out options. We can just toggle our background on and off. And then here's what I was talking about earlier where we have multiple skies. So you can really select what kind of look you're going for here over in this background mode. I think sky number six is perfect. Now let's come down and you see we have background colorization. I'm going to kind of turn that up a bit just so we can see what's happening, but we really need to change the colors and such in our shadows and highlights. Now, here's a really easy way to match our colors quite quickly. We're going to go back into our freeze frame and you can see our mask shadows. We can see that mask colorization is at 0.6, so keep that in mind. Mask shadows, I'm going to open this. Now I'm going to open my sky back and you can literally just pick that color up and drag it into your shadows and boom, now your shadows have the same matching color as your Blockbuster 17 preset. And then you can use the colorization tool to toggle it however you would like. And of course we could do the same with our highlights. It is just a little bit different, a little bit blue. So we will pick that up and change that to our highlights as well. And now looky there, how awesome is that? Our colors are good to go. We've matched them and it was really simple. As you continue down, if you did want to mess with the hue or something, you can do so here, as well as background saturation. You can bring that up or down as you see fit. Brightness blur, defocus, which I really like defocus, so I'm going to actually use that a little bit more than the default. And then we have our shadows levels and our highlights levels. Beneath we have vignette options, grain, film dirt, etc. because this is being animated, of course, behind. So there you go. Now, I think that this kind of snow effect is really cool in Freeze Frame Blockbuster 17. However, I think that I might want rain. That would make a little bit more sense with these clouds. So we're gonna go in Blockbuster 17. Let's scroll down and we see the snow and we're just going to turn that off. So we're just gonna bring the snow opacity all the way down so that we can then drag in our rain now we want that to be happening in front of our actor here. So we're just going to have that rain coming in. 
I think that the rain's direction could honestly be turning left instead. So we're just going to use our on-screen control there to have that going left. And then over in our inspector, if you need, we have animations in and out, rain opacity, blending, the color, scale, speed, blur, etc. So you can really make some changes there if you would like to. I think maybe some smaller rain and maybe go a little bit faster would be cool. There we go. Now for this particular look, I think that typography number eight looks really cool. And I wanted to remind you all about layers. So as you can see here, if we were to just use our on-screen controls, we can bring that up a bit. We can bring that maybe up above. Obviously, because that title is on top, that is going to not be affected by anything, including our mask. But what if you wanted that mask to maybe be in front of your text? Well, it's layers, so let's just bring it down. And then now, check that out. Our typography is behind our mask. Pretty cool. Why don't we just change this title text to interplanetary. We can scale that down a bit. Let's change our font to Castoro. We can come down and we can change. You can see the interplanetary, the N is red. Now in this one, if you want a different color uh, that is in your title distinction color, we're just gonna toggle that off for now. And I'm seeing that everything's a little bit too big. The composition isn't great. So we're gonna open up the freeze frame blockbuster again. And let's just scale him down just a bit, not too much, something like that. And then we can go back to our interplanetary, grab our on-screen control, maybe just bring that in subtly beneath. That's kind of cool looking. We can use our position here in our inspector if we want. But again, really cool that you can add that in behind that mask. So he just kind of comes up and check that out. It's subtle, but it's really, really interesting looking. All right, I'd like to get a bit more text. So why don't we check out typography number seven? Let's just drag that in on top. And honestly, that looks pretty good right out of the box. Of course, you could go in and change your settings as you see fit. But what we're trying to do here is sort of create a moving movie poster. So if you wanted to make any changes over in your inspector, of course, here they are along with your on-screen controls. And I'm liking this, but I'm still not sure if I love the color. So let's get back to our overlay. Let's open up our LUT presets. Let's drag that in. I wanna drag that beneath our typography because I don't really want to change anything regarding that. And then you can see over in our inspector, we have animation in and out if we would like. And then we have different LUTs. These LUTs are amazing. Now, not all of the LUTs that you see here are going to come with this. You would want to just select M Freeze Frame Blockbuster. Those will be options. You have Animator, then you have Cameraman, Director, Editor. Editor looks really cool, honestly. Filmmaker. Gaffer, screenwriter, and stuntman. I think for this example, why don't we do screenwriter? That looks really, really good. All right, and there you have it. That is a quick tutorial on how to use the very complete tool set that comes in. And we didn't even touch some of the other options like anamorphic effect, which is really cool. And it just kind of comes in. Of course, you would want to not affect your text in that way, but just showing you how that looks. If you wanted to set a letterbox really quickly, you can do so here and use your on-screen controls to adjust the position of that. You can also change your letterbox preset here in your inspector. We will delete that for now. You have lights and particles. I mean, there is just so much that can happen in here. I mean, I didn't even hardly do anything. I just dragged it on and look how awesome that looks. So 
I highly encourage you to check out M Freeze Frame Blockbuster. It is now available on motionvfx.com. Again, this is George Edmondson. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.